At the Global Rounds, your coaches are much more than coaches. In fact, there's probably not a lot of coaching that actually goes on at the Global Rounds. Instead, it is attending to all of your needs, making sure you get on buses, making sure you go to sleep at night, and then making sure again later and later, and then probably giving up and just going to sleep themselves. But we would like to begin uh, by honoring a few coaches who, whether over the course of this year or over many years, have shown great dedication to building up programs at their schools, to leading you and many other scholars over the years to our events. So we would like to honor a few coaches of the year here at the Hague Global Round. Now, we will only be honoring four coaches in the junior division. However, there are so many coaches in here that are deserving of these awards. When our team puts our heads together to decide on which coaches we should honor, the list is always incredibly long at the beginning. And then each of us make our cases for who we think is maybe more deserving. But the truth is, there are so many more of you than just four. But these are four that we have decided as a team are very much worthy of this award here this afternoon. To introduce and honor the first coach of the year, we'd like to welcome up a member of our team who does a lot behind the scenes, just like your coaches, but often does not get enough credit. Scholars, can you put your hands together for Julie Wang? who is also great at giving speeches off the cuff. Scholars, throughout the past 12 or 13 years of the World Scholars Cup, we have encountered coaches who join us from far and from wide. And many of these coaches, they come to us first from a city where they start the program. And soon afterwards, they leave. However, the merit of these coaches is that they bring the program with them to a new school in a new country, which is what precisely our first coach of the year has done. He began the program at a small tournament in the city of Geneva in Switzerland, but has since then moved to a city where we don't even have a local Scholars' Cup round. And when he moved, he wrote to us, and he said, hello, I am now in California in the middle of nowhere. And back then, we only had two events. We still do, in Los Angeles and in San Jose, neither of which were particularly close to his new school. But through his resilience, and we know his love and support for us, for the program, he brought his students three hours for the last three years in a row to the closest round to him and from there to global rounds, including here in The Hague. And it is with our greatest honor and greatest delight to present our first coach of the year to Micah Price from the Healdsburg School. Our second coach of the year this season here at the Hague Global Round is a coach from a school where for a moment it seemed the program might dwindle or even disappear. But when this coach saw that her students were still keen to participate, even though her school was a little bit skeptical, she rallied for them, she advocated for them, and she ensured that the school would support them both at the regional and now here at the global round. She is someone who signed up for this program when it didn't even exist in her country and has given it so much heart and so much guidance for her scholars ever since we first came to Greece. 
we welcome our second coach of the year from St. Catharines British School, Francesco Stafford. To announce our third coach of the year, we would like to call to the podium someone you will see again in a little bit. Our managing director, Mr. Jeremy Chumley. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, we occasionally get the opportunity to honor and give thanks to coaches who contribute to the program in very many ways, and this is certainly one of those occasions. The first and foremost way is, of course, coaching and mentoring and leading and stewarding the program at their own schools. This coach has certainly done that. She represents one of the very strongest programs anywhere in the World Scholars Cup universe. And she did it in a way that impresses me in that she took over a program that was already well established. And sometimes when that happens, programs can fade. In this case, it didn't fade, it became even stronger. Last year, I think she had 150 students, 152, I think it was, at the regional round. You can imagine what a feat that is. Since 2016, we've seen her at the global rounds with dozens of students and at every Tournament of Champions those years since. And her students' accomplishments speak for themselves. But as I said, there are other ways, whether it's hosting a round in your community or introducing us to schools that we can reach out to, or whether it's being our friend and confidant and helping us in other ways. Scholars, one of the most valuable friends you can have is one who will give you honest feedback and feedback that is, as in your debates, not only courteous and kind, but constructive. And for, for the past couple of years, this coach has been our confidant. And she has said, because your program means so much to our students and to our school, and because we really like you, I'm gonna try to help you get better. And so she has taken countless hours out of her days and weeks to share with us things from her perspective that we may not see from ours. And although she may not know it, we take that dearly to heart. For the past couple of years, she has taken to sending us these progress reports during the middle of our big events. And when our team gets those, it's like you're opening your report card or your test scores. Like, how did we do? Uh, but she'll be candid and she'll let us know where we can improve and we always can and we always will try to. But she does it because she's a staunch advocate for her students and for this program and for the entire community, for all of you. We are grateful to honor Vivian Brooks from North London Collegiate School, Jeju. I'll have you all know that the first thing she said to me as she came on stage was, you are in so much trouble. <laughs> and now I'm wondering what for. Report card. Oh, FYI, the, the incident in Myanmar, the fire was next door. But the smoke was visible and things were tight and tough. Uh, to introduce our, uh, our fourth and final coach of the year, Joga, why didn't you we take the podium? 
Scholars, this final Coach of the Year, a bit different from the previous one, is uh, one who started the program anew at the school that she teaches at. I remember the first time that I met her, I believe it was in 2016, and it happened to be a day where there was no school. Maybe it was a public holiday, I can't remember. But she drove from her home to a small cafe in the city that she lives in to meet with me to learn more about the World Scholars Cup because she was so excited about the possibility of introducing it to students at her school. And I remember that she actually brought her son with her, which ties into her role in the World Scholars Cup because she's not just a coach, but also a parent because her son actually did participate. I don't know if it was that first year, but I know in subsequent years he did and he went to Global Rounds and the Tournament of Champions. And this is a coach who takes every opportunity to try to get any information she can for her scholars, whether it's asking for sample debate topics or scholars bowl questions or writing topics so that they can prepare as they're getting ready for the regional rounds and for the global rounds. And over the last couple of years, with her leadership, her delegation has always brought us gifts to almost every member of our team. They always have a bag of different things. So they've really become great friends to us. And she is such a passionate supporter of the World Scholars Cup. It's hard for us to remember a time that she wasn't a part of the community at the Istanbul round. This is a coach from Uskadar Sev School, Ms. Vedia Zalma. And scholars, for every coach we're able to honor on stage, there are so many whom we do not have the chance to bring up here individually, but every one of them puts so much heart and effort into this program. Can we ask all the coaches of this community to take to their feet and have you cheer them as they deserve to be cheered? I know this means briefly leaving your chairs. And now one more time, can we have a round of applause for our coaches of the year on stage before they head back to join their delegations. And now, scholars, we come to that moment in the ceremony when we turn our attention to your achievements. Over the course of this past week here in The Hague, you have done so much individually and as a community. You have taken the scholars' challenge. You have survived the scholars' challenge. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Scholars, you have also debated. You have survived the debating. Survival is big here. You have watched two amazing scholars' shows. You have survived two scholars' shows. Okay, interesting. You have survived. And so have we. <laughs> All's good. Scholars, tonight we will be awarding you recognition as individuals and as teams across all the subjects you have explored and across all the events for which you have practiced so many hours, so many different skills from public speaking to teamwork to peer feedback. This means that we must award more than just a few medals. We must also award qualification for the Yale Tournament of Champions.
Indeed, scholars, at the end of the award ceremony, you will find out if your team is among those who have qualified to continue this journey later on this year at Yale University. But before then, there are, well, how many medals exactly are there, Daniel? Well, there will be exactly, Joga, 2,749 <laughs> silver medals. And how many gold medals are there, Chauncey? I'm assuming, based on Daniel's love for symmetry, that there are 2,749 gold medals. What kind of reasoning was that? Wait, does this mean that there are also 2,749 trophies? That would be a three-way symmetry. How does that work? Uh, it means that we would need many, many more tables. We would also need 2,749 pineapples. Well, not every trophy has a pineapple inside of it. Some, Some do not have fit. the space. Yeah. yeah. It is sad. Pineapples do not come in all shapes and sizes. Scholars, we will be awarding a total of how many medals, Dylan? We will be awarding 2,900. Ah, 2,749 times two. Yes. And scholars, how many medals is that? Math is not part of the World Scholars Cup. That's right, scholars. It is a lot of medals. Scholars, that is a total of 5,498 medals, which we will be awarding in approximately two hours' time. How many medals a minute is that, Joga? That is about 28 medals per minute? No, it's not even close. A little more, that. maybe? It is many medals per minute. Scholars, 54 and 98 is an important number in the World Scholars Cup because May 4th, 1998 was Dylan's birthday. No. Oh, well, it'd be cool if it was. <laughs> 